All right, in this video, we are going to introduce the topic of logic in discrete mathematics. If you want a very in-depth series on logic, I have a natural deductive logic series up, which would be offered in a philosophy department. I know you say philosophy, it's not very, you know, it's not important, it's a little crazy, but the logic portion of philosophy is very rigorous. So if you're really interested in this logic and what's to come, and you want better explanations of what's going on, check out the Natural Deductive Logic series, because discrete math logic takes a lot of things for granted and doesn't explain a lot of the backstory of it. Anyways, what is logic? Well, logic defines statements, how things interact, how proofs work. So we need to start with the basic, and what is a statement? A statement is anything that can be true or false. It doesn't necessarily have to be true, it doesn't necessarily have to be false, but if it is possible to be either of them, then it is a statement. So, an example. Every even number is divisible by 2. This is a statement because it is true. We know it to be true. What about 2 is in the set of integers? Well, we know this is true as well, because 2 is an integer. Let's talk about this other statement. Mark owns a llama. Who is Mark? I have no idea who Mark is. I don't know if he owns a llama. But if he does own a llama, the statement would be true. If he doesn't, the statement would be false. Therefore, we can say that this is a statement because it can be either true or false. 7 is less than 5. The statement is false, but it still is a statement because we are we are putting a fact down there, we are declaring a fact, and we can either say this is true or this is false. Things that are not statements are questions. Questions cannot be statements. If I say, who is George Washington? You cannot say true or false, because that's not a fact. The statements are sort of factoids. And another thing are imperatives, and that's a fancy word for saying stuff like clean the garage or commands. Well, if I say, go tie your shoes, you can't say yes, that's true. Or, yeah, that's, that's false. It doesn't make any sense. So these things are not statements. But the things that are statements are declarative sentences. If you want just a, a nice Wikipedia article to read because you don't understand what a statement is, this key word here will tell you what statements are. They're declarative sentences. Some books will use proposition instead of the word statement. That philosophically is a very bold statement because propositions are defined a little bit differently, but statement is sufficient. And how do we denote our statements? Well, we're going to use capital letters. And capital letters are good because they're very easy to see. And we can really, really shorten our statements into stuff that's workable. So here, our sentence 2 is even. We're just going to represent it by the letter P. So if I say, oh, P, then you'd be like, that's true. P is true. In fact, if we say p is true, we write p is equal to 1. You might also see p is equal to true if you read more philosophical intro texts, but 1s and zeros are what we use for true and false in discrete math, so I would expect that you would also follow that sort of convention. And of course, we have r here is it is snowing. And these are closed statements. These do not have variables in them. When we have variables, we have what we call open statements, which is actually predicate logic, but I will be getting to that shortly. Now when we have an open statement, our open statement with the variable does not have a truth value. So this really isn't right here a statement because it can't be true or false. What can be true or false is when we substitute a number into the variable. Because by substituting something constant into a variable, it then becomes either true or false. So these open statements here 
do not have truth values, but these closed statements do have truth values. This is something you need to be aware of because in a test or something, that is a question that probably won't be asked. But if your prof or instructor really wants to test you on the basics of if you understand what's going on, it's a pretty good question to ask. We also have connectives. So I'm introducing some Greek letters here. Uh, I like Greek letters because these are what we use for meta variables and logic. So these are the letters phi and psi. And when we want to talk about things, we need ways of joining our statements together. So before we had R for it is not raining, or sorry, we have R for it is raining. But what if we want to say it isn't raining? We don't want to define a new letter for that. So what we do is we have this connective not, and we stick a negation symbol in front of it, and now this means it is not raining. So I will write this, it is not raining. And you can say not it is raining if you really want to be super technical about how you translate things, but you can use your knowledge of the English language to sort of change things for it to make semantic sense in your head. That's totally okay. Now if we have two statements, phi and psi, we can conjoin them together with this hat here, p and r. So in this statement, we have two is even and it is raining. And we use this little cap symbol right here. Uh, this can be called cap, it can be called uh, a carrot. These are the two common words and I should mention this right here is either not or neg. Sometimes you will see different symbols used, so I'll write them here. Sometimes you'll see a tilde for not. Sometimes with the cap you will see an and, you might see a dot, and you might even see the two symbols side by side. For or, we write this P or Q with a little V, and to be honest, I don't remember what this is actually called, because I never use any other word except for V or or. I just call this or or V, it doesn't matter. Uh, some other things you might see are a plus sign. It's very uncommon. This V right here is probably the most standard notation in every book ever written. And this is the same sentence except we have or in the middle instead. Finally, if we have if-then statements, we have P and then we have an arrow with R. Some texts, well this is just called an arrow, some texts will use this symbol right here, but as we know, that is a symbol for a superset, and in logic, and really any mathematics that use this symbol for a conditional statement. I think it's a little bit crazy for them to use that symbol because it's very ambiguous, especially when you talk about logic in terms of sets. It can get very, very confusing, so I would just use an arrow for everything. I should mention, sometimes there is a difference between these two arrows, and that is purely a, a logical thing. I'm sure in your introductory course it won't make that much of a difference, but be aware if they use different arrows in your text. And this just means, if 2 is even, then it is raining. So these are all of our connectives here. And you will be using these all the time. So let's do some practice here. We're going to let P be Pete is happy. We're going to let John be John is sad. And we're going to let M be Mary is sexy. Now what does M arrow P and not J mean? So take a, take a second, see if you can figure it out. Hopefully, you're able to 
see a few things here. One, we have brackets. We bracket things to make sure that things are paired properly with each other. We also have something called scope, which I might talk about a little bit later, but essentially when we have an and between two things, it binds it more powerfully than an arrow. Really, what you should be doing is putting brackets around everything, much like you would for multiplication, addition, that kind of stuff to make sure nothing's ambiguous. So really, this is what you should be doing. But what does this mean? Okay, this means if Mary is sexy, I'm going to put a bracket around things I'm talking about. Then, okay, P, Pete is happy, and, and then we have John is not sad, because we have not J. So, if J is John is sad, then not J is John is not sad. And this is our sentence. If Mary is sexy, then Peter is happy, and John is not sad. So that was intro to logic. It's not too bad. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments, and I will respond to them as quickly as I possibly can.